I'm trying to get in polluting obstetrics in Germany and Switzerland. And I'm working mainly with non-Muslim people. And I perceive that the most, like the biggest prejudice against Islam is about the equality between men and women. So my question is how to explain to them the, how it is in reality. Sister, the question that oh, she's a gynecologist and the major difficulty she has to try and prove the equality of men and women in Islam and how to do it. For the complete answer, you can refer to my video cast that women that is in Islam. I'll just give you in brief that in Islam, men and women are equal. But equality doesn't mean identicality. They're equal, but they are not identical. Let me give you an example. That if in a class, two students come out first, student A and student B. And in the question paper, if you analyze, there are 10 questions, each carrying 10 marks. When you analyze both the students who come out first, they get 80 out of 100. Student A, in question number one, gets 9 out of 10. Student B gets 8 out of 10. In question number two, student A gets 8 out of 10. Student B gets 9 out of 10. In the remaining question from 3 to 10, both get 8 out of 10. If you add up, both get 80 out of 100. But in answer to question one, student A is superior than B. In answer to question two, student B is superior to A. Overall, both are equal. So in some aspects, the men have a degree of advantage. In some aspects, the women have a degree of advantage. Men and women, they are made biologically different. They are made physically different. They are made psychologically different. So based on the biological makeup, the physiological makeup, the psychological makeup, the roles are different. Many times, they are same. Sometimes they are different. I cannot say, okay, fine, I want to be equal to the woman and I want to give birth to a child. Allah has made me biologically different. And you are a gynecologist. No, no, I want to be equal to the woman. I want to give birth to a child. And you have some lunatics who keep on saying such things and then they want to change the gender. And you know what happens. Let's not go into that. So men and women are equal, but they are not identical. For example, if a robber enters my house, I will not tell, I believe in women's liberalization. I will not tell my wife to go and fight the robber. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa chapter 4, verse number 34, that Allah has given more strength to the male as compared to the woman. So I should go and fight. When it comes to respecting the parents, our beloved Prophet said, when a man came and approached him, in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 8, that who deserves the maximum love and companionship? The Prophet said, your mother. The man asked after that too. The Prophet said, your mother. The man asked after that too. Third time, the Prophet said, your mother. The fourth time when the man asked, after that too, the Prophet said, your father. That means 75% of a love and companionship goes to the mother, 25% goes to the, to the father. That means mother gets the gold medal, she gets the silver medal, as well as the bronze medal. Father has to be satisfied with the mere consolation prize. So where it comes to love, respect, companionship to the parents, the mother has a degree of advantage. Where it comes to strength, the men have a degree of advantage. So based on the biological makeup, the psychological makeup, the physiological makeup, men and women have different roles. They are equal, but not identical. For the complete reply, you can refer to my video cassettes, Women Nights in Islam, along with the question answer session. So based on each question they ask, inshallah, you can give a logical reply and convince them. Hope that answers the question.